I was challenged to create a layout using the terrific stamp set of the month for a recent retreat that we've had in Queenstown. Each of the consultants was asked to take on a role of responsibility and um, this was one that I, I took on. When I look at the stamp set, it feels like a card set. However, after spending a bit of time on Pinterest, wandering around on different web pages and Facebook groups, I came up with a few different ideas. I decided to do some um, first generation, second generation and third generation stamping to create um, some background interest on some of the white cardstock. And to do this, I am using the back of my black map because this has got a nice um, foam surface which makes it really good for inking. And you can see here that I ink more than once. I ink the once and stamp more than once. So each time you stamp, the inking gets lighter and this creates just a different texture or effect than if all of them were the same level of juiciness from the ink. So the, I've just used the black archival. You could do this with any color ink and you could probably do this with almost any stamp as well. I didn't want a stamp that was too detailed in this case, just keeping it nice and simple because as you'll see later on, I'm going to use a mixture of patterned papers. So um, this is a great layout for using up scraps and pieces of paper. It requires just two by two inch squares, so you could have every single square could be from a different piece of paper or from the same. And this is where uh, the beauty of our double sided papers comes out because each time I can cut two squares and I'm going to have two different pieces of paper. So the layouts I've recently been creating have been from Hello Lovely and Sugar Rush and so these scraps are all from both of those sets and they're just mixed up. It's not about just one set or the colours all coordinating perfectly, however as you'll see they work anyway. And so I've used the squares and I've just arranged them so that I know I've got an idea where my photo is going to sit and I decided I needed a more neutral um, a neutral couple of squares, squares because I'm going to put some of the sentiment stamps from the terrific stamp set onto some of these so I needed to make sure there was going to be a background surface that the sentiment could be seen. So I get my scraps out of the way and I have a look at the photo now. I print my photos often on a Canon selfie and the ones that I the refills that I buy have those tear off strips that I was just taking off. One of the beauties of this is that the photo is already mounted because I printed it with a white border. So I want the um, squares to be seen, but they don't they're not to be the dominant. The photo needs to stand out because that's the that's the record or that's what I'm actually documenting. Um, despite enjoying the process of putting on colour and playing with papers and glue and things at the same time. The, um, the stamps are fabulous that we have because they are clear so I can place them on the layout and have an idea of what they might look like when they're inked up. Our stamps also come with that nice foam backing which means that when I, I don't have to use the back of my black mat. For smaller projects like this I often just use the little foam that comes with the stamp sets and this just helps to make the impression when you're stamping it neater and tidier and it, it just really works and it supports the stamping process. So again as with the background I'm using my black archival ink you could use other colors but just make sure the color for a project like this is going to stand out enough without taking over from the background. So I do this three times, sticking with design element of threes. So I was able to choose three of the um, sentiments from the stamp set to put onto the page. So I used you are your my cup of tea, good times are even better when they're shared, and you are terrific. Uh, so this photo is of my daughters having a bit of fun at the beach sometime, and it's kind of, I guess the sentiments relate to sort of sisterly love. So my next task, um, I decided I want a bit of dimension and to make some more use of this stamp of the month. And so I'm using some of the watercolour paper. I am going to use my archival black ink to stamp the three teacups and the little floral arrangement a few times on here. And I'm doing it a few times so that because I'm going to colour them with watercolours, I while I don't, um, I'm not a perfectionist scrapbooker, 
I also am aware that I can make a mistake and I don't want something that looks really terrible or really badly painted stuck onto a page um, that I want my daughters or my family to enjoy in the future. So I stamp this a few times meaning that I can colour it and if I muck it up then I have got another one already re-stamped and I don't have to set up for the stamping process. So cleaning down my stamps with our spray and scrubber, returning it to its space to keep the rubber protected so that it's not going to get all dirty and dusty. Well it's not rubber, it's acrylics. Okay, so pulling cutting down these strips makes it just easier to access. I'm going to use our watercolour paints. Well used set. And I'm going to use the fine tip brush. These brushes work fabulously. They've got uh, water in the body of them which just comes out the end as needed and so I can squeeze it to get a little bit more water or um, let it drip off to have less water on there. And so just colouring in the little spaces. It's often a good idea to be looking at the um, at the colours that are on the papers and the layouts when you're colouring in the in the stamping and that way you can just make sure you're choosing things in tone or in keeping with what you're already creating or what you've already put together. So cleaning off the brush on um, the paper in the background, just that's all I need to do. It's run clear so I can now choose another colour and put that onto the um, onto the stamped image that I'm colouring in. So here I've coloured them all in and I'm going to do some fussy cutting around each of the items that I want to put onto my page. So this takes, it does take a little bit of time, especially the likes of the flowers because there is a lot of detail on there and so it depends how fussy you want to be. I cut around the outside, I did cut the inside of the handles out and I cut reasonably closely to each of the flowers. So here I've got them all cut out and I'm just about ready to put my page together. So here's the page, it's been rather well um, shuffled around as I move it in and out of the space in my working space. So again just rearranging things to make it so that it's going, the sentiment's going to be visible and having a think about where I will put these painted embellishments. Stamps are so versatile and that you can create them as an embellishment, they can be a background, they can be a sentiment, they can be part of your title and as you'll see uh, soon I also use the teacup that's down the bottom right as my journaling area. So just getting them positioned because my next step is to think about my title and so what I did with the title is I'm using my Cricut and I'm going to cut out the word sisters using the art booking cartridge and I've cut that out using the whisper cardstock because I just felt that that went nicely with the picture um, it, and it was subtle enough to be there yet it had a bit of a um, it, it didn't take over. So sisters, quite happy with the title being there but I decided I would lower it below the photograph. Before you saw me using the ruler I was just measuring sort of the height that I wanted it to be to sit on the page whether I wanted it the full two inches of the squares or a little bit less and I did go, I ended up going a little bit less. So using the ink daubers I'm just inking up the edges. I found it easier inking things this way than using the ink pad directly on the papers etc because I'm um, quite prone to messing things up a bit and putting perhaps too much ink on there. So I'm using the Tombow tape roller to stick each of the squares in place. And getting that all stuck down so that it is ready for my photo. And then I'm going to actually use some of the dimensional or the foam tape 
to lift up some of those embellishments and the title. So just two strips is enough on each of these for it to adhere to the page properly. And again, I'll do the same with the photograph. It is covering up some of the teacups, but that doesn't matter. They were created as background. So it's just like any background type paper. So placing on the items that I'll later stick down with the foam tape. Here you can see I'm grabbing some. Looks like I need to replace that roll soon. So they're all stuck down. I'm just sticking down the last little flower. It just gives a little bit of uh, a little bit more dimension on the page when they're stuck up higher than if they were just sitting flat. And it's probably not something you can see very well from this perspective, but when you look at the layout up quite closely, it's quite nice. At the retreat I did see a lady use the teacup stamp that I've got left empty there at the moment um, and she re-stamped it and then she stamped it, she um, cut it out, fussy cut around it and stuck it on top. It looked quite cool so she actually had her journaling lifted out from the page as well. So um, getting these all stuck down, peeling off the bits. So I pre -had, I didn't stick them down until I had all the letters ready to go. So peeling off the little bits off the back of the tape and positioning that on the page. The ruler just to make sure it's kept in a nice-ish line as I go. And happy with the placement, it's time to actually adhere each of these embellishments to the page. So what I'm going to pick up now is our clear shimmer brush. Now this just adds a finishing touch to things. So I'm using this on some of the teacups. I'll put some of it onto the flowers, not all over, because otherwise it ruins the, um, I guess, the impact that it can have. So I'm going to put this on some of those bits, uh, making sure because it's watercolours, the colour can come onto the brush. So I just had to wash that off on the side there. So I'm just putting it on parts of the images and I'll put a little bit on the flowers and I'm also going to put this onto my lettering just to give it something that little bit extra that things often need. So putting a little bit in the flowers and then also onto the title onto the lettering in the title. So just a generous amount on here because I kind of want this to be one of the main features. Another option to make this shiny, I guess, would be um, using the liquid glass type um, product because this seals and gives it a nice glossy finish when it's done. But my daughter was borrowing mine recently and she left the lid off for a bit long, so I've got to see if there's some way of being able to rescue it. And so I decided to use also the little steam bits that came in the stamp set and I'm going to do a little bit of first, second and third generation stamping on of these. Um, I did a second layout which you can see on my blog when I was demonstrating this layout to the ladies at the retreat. And I didn't actually use the steam and I don't mind it. Um, it looks quite nice with and it looks quite nice without in this particular project. But it's nice being able to have the option. Okay, so my next step is to add my journaling and often I take a little bit of time just to reflect on the page that's in front of me before I add in the details. And so added the journaling, just adding a little bit of a date under one of the, the squares and done.